I salute you in the name of Global Young Greens and Kenya Young Greens. Good afternoon, how are you? Uh, I'm going to give a brief presentation on what I believe as a green family we should adopt as our future so that we can be able to conduct our core business of saving the earth and ensuring that we live sustainable lives. The picture you've just seen is a picture that was taken last week of Kenya Young Greens who are trying to organize around issues of climate change, issues of uh, depletion of natural resources. I just wanted to show it to you so that you can know that at least there's some local action going on in Kenya. And this local action is what contributes to what we do globally and what we call global action. Actually, same thing, some of, these young, some of these young people are in there with you and they're carrying the message home. All right, beautiful. So when I went to look at the past of the global greens from Canberra, we have achieved, or rather, at the Global Greens Congress in Canberra, there was achieved a charter, a, green, a global green network, and a global green coordination. And some of these tools and structures are the ones that have brought us where we are today. Now, it is said that we are 75 parties strong. Question asked the Green family is, so what? Why I ask this kind of question is that I think what we have is parties, mostly from my experience in Kenya and maybe in Africa generally, that are just green parties but are not green parties in principle, that don't subscribe to the Global Green Charter. And I think this is where we have our structural and institutional problems that need to be worked on now if we have to build strong parties that are going to move the agenda forward. And these parties have to be built on membership, strong membership, recruitment nationally, regionally, and of course now globally. We should be able to know how many representatives do we, do we have in these regions that are going to contribute to the general strength of the global green family. What kind of programs or projects are we working on in terms of campaigns, advocacy, and real program work that is able to inspire the rest of the world and tell it to come in support of the kind of issues that we stand for? What I think is the future of the global green family, family is that we need now at this stage here, at this moment, a strong secretariat that works under the global green coordination, that has a stronger and a broader mandate so that it can be able to guide and move us towards the future that we look into. And this should be able to be more open, more inclusive, in that it's able to carry out audits, monitoring and evaluation of the activities and the programs that parties participate in, federations participate in, what the Global Green Coordination does and what the Global Green Networks do. This way we could adopt a, a real proactive structure that is going to help us achieve the general global mandate that we have. I believe we need a strong institutional capacity building. We know that maybe in Africa, for instance, the strength, the growth of green parties is still at a low level. We need to work on that. We need to ensure that we have all these federations on board in a stronger way with clarity of vision where we are able to move towards the same direction without any doubt whatsoever. I also think it's important that the Global Greens 
is able to define its relationship, most importantly, with emerging greens, who we call global young greens. There is need to co-opt global young structures in decision making in the global green structures and have representation that is able to also communicate the global young structures and networks. Basically, uh, and uh, one other point is that there's a need to establish a coordinated and transparent green fund. And I believe it's out of this coordinated and transparent green fund that we are able to get resources more blessed together and that we can use these resources in particular programs or projects if we want to run campaigns on climate change, forests, for instance, or building parties and networks in whichever region of the earth. Because I believe that the uncoordinatedness of maybe sponsorship, for instance, establishment of parties in Africa has, has led to a kind of lethargy and uh, un, un democratic kind of engagement in, on, in political parties in Africa. I want to give an example, for instance. In Kenya, where I come from, there is Amazingira Greens Party. And this party, you could ask me here today, which party are you from? And I couldn't be able to tell you exactly which part I come from. Because we have structures that don't work. We have a Green Party that is not democratic, that is not participatory, that is not inclusive. If these are the kind of parties we want to plant worldwide, we can say we have 172 parties. So what? Are these parties pushing and moving the global green agenda? In terms of the mandate then, the Global Green Network and the Global Green Coordination and most probably the Secretariat, which we, I hope we will establish before we leave here, should be able to have a mandate to monitor, to watch what happens uh, nationally and uh, from the federations with these parties. Why should we have a party that is not open to membership? Why should we have a party that is not involved in campaigns and advocacy nationally about climate change, about what's happening with forests? We need to ask, it's not only the work of non-government organizations when you have a registered party that doesn't truly really work. On my last point, and I hope I'm still under the eight minutes, I want to give some green advice that is called V-Fly. V is a sign for victory. Let's move in the same direction. Unity means less effort. Our global unity means that we use little energy to accomplish much. There's need for mutual respect. There's need for courage and encouragement of all the green brotherhood and sisterhood. And there's need for, la for us to stay beside each other in good and bad times. Thank you.